Today we begin Big Ten play as the Minnesota Gophers begin their Big Ten schedule at home against the Iowa Hawkeyes for the Floyd of Rosedale. The first four games of the season are over. Minnesota comes into this week 3-1. They suffered their first defeat last week at the hands of San Jose State and look to bounce back today and hopefully reclaim the Floyd of Rosedale from Iowa. And of course, once Big Ten play is underway, we're going to really find out who this team is. And so it's time to kick off Big Ten football. Minnesota and Iowa, it's up next. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers have the football to begin the football game. Twin tight ends for quarterback Phillip Nelson, who hands off as Nell Kirkwood straight up the middle for a gain of five. That's all pick up on the first play from scrimmage. And the Gophers look for Philip Nelson to really step up this week after four interceptions in last week's game as he's back to pass on second and five, steps up and runs, and he has the first down himself, and the chains will move for the Gophers. Second down and eight, two wide, two tight ends for Nelson. Back to throw with time outside, and it's knocked down out of the air intended for Isaac Frickty. On third down eight, the Gophers go three wide. Andre McDonald out of the slot. Nelson under pressure. He breaks out of a sack. Now steps up and has room across the 40. First down and more. Collides with Kirkwood down to the 50-yard line, but it's a gain of 20 yards for Philip Nelson. Good pickup on a broken play. First down and 10. Nelson with three wide. Outside, and it's intercepted by Lomax intended for Andre McDonald. And the woes continue for Philip Nelson as he had Andre open for a second but waited too long and Lomax jumped the pass and it's Iowa football. The fifth interception in the last two games from Nelson is seventh on the year and Jake Rudock back to pass for the Hawkeyes offense as he finds his halfback out of the backfield for a two yard pickup. Three wide for the Hawkeyes, they need eight yards on third down. Rudock to throw over the middle, he's got his tight end CJ Fedorowicz in Gophers territory for a 20 yard first down. Fedorowicz is one of the guys that Gophers really have to watch out for. The other is Mark Wiseman who's running off tackle, makes a man look silly, and he collides with his own man, a 24-yard gain inside the red zone. Big first down for the Hawkeyes. Iowa marching down the field now inside the 10. It's Bullock off tackle, and he breaks a tackle of Brock Vereen, and he's into the end zone for a 9-yard touchdown run as Iowa strikes first in this Big Ten season opener. It's Damon Bullock off tackle for a 9-yard touchdown. And so the Gophers down by seven after the Nelson interception. He hands off to Kirkwood on first down. Is brought down in the backfield. And he had him dead to rights. Anthony Hitchens. Andre McDonald back in the game at second down and 11 yards to go. Good protection for Nelson over the middle behind his tight end. But he makes the catch. Drew Goodrum for 14 yards. And that'll move the chains. Nelson just needs to find his rhythm again. He hands off to Kirkwood up the middle. A nine-yard gain. So I'll pick up its third down and one. And so a single back set, twin tight ends on third and short. Kirkwood up the middle, finding room, and he's breaking tackles, and he has five yards and a Gophers first down. James Gillum in the backfield now, 3.46 to go in the third quarter. Gillum up the gun, he has room, 11 yards, and a first down again. And the ground game has really opened up the last couple weeks. It got off to a slow start, but right now this team has been playing very balanced. And now Crawford Tuss makes the catch over the middle, a 17-yard catch, and the Gophers are moving down the field. Minnesota trying their best to answer Iowa on a successful drive so far. Can they put this in the end zone or get some points? It's Nelson back to throw. Who's dropped for a sack of nine yards in the backfield by Drew Ott? You like to see Nelson try to slide away and avoid this type of pressure, but it's a loss of nine. So third and 23 yards, three wide for the Gophers as Iowa sends four underneath. Pass is cut by Frick D, a four-yard gain. Now the field goal unit comes out. Chris Hawthorne, 2 of 4 on the year, as long as 34. And the snap is down, kick up, and Hawthorne's kick is good! 49 yards. 7-3 Iowa on top as the Gophers answer back with a field goal. Down by 4, it's Wiseman off the screen for Iowa as he's met by James Manuel after a 5-yard catch. Third down and 9. Gophers trying to get him off the field here quickly. And outside, it's Wiseman again on the screen, being pursued by Hageman and brought down. It's a tackle for Aaron Hill, shy of the first down, it's fourth and two. After forcing a three and out, the Gophers are in danger of going three and out. It's third and short, Nelson outside, and Goodger makes the catch, takes a hard hit, but has three yards and enough for the first down. Chains move, it's now first and ten. McDonald in the slot, and Nelson outside, it's his halfback. Kirkwood out of the backfield on the swing, and he's up to the 40, meets his own man, and then has a seven-yard catch. Twin tight ends on second and three. Nelson gives the Kirkwood up the middle. More running room in Iowa territory, a 12-yard gain this time, first down. The Gophers have really shown the last few weeks that if you let them run, that's exactly what they want to do. And Kirkwood's been playing very well as this is Nelson outside. He finds this wide receiver, Andre McDonald, a 13-yard catch. 
Second and five, it's Gillum up the gut, and Gillum has the first down as he spells. Kirkwood and picks up six on the ground. Minnesota moving the ball effectively after their interception drive, and now first and ten. Nelson avoids the sack, he breaks a tackle over the middle, and Fricky with the touchdown catch, 22 yards. Nelson this time showing resiliency in the pocket as he does not allow himself to be brought down, and stands tall and fires a strike to Fricky wide open for a touchdown. And Minnesota has their first lead of the day after the fourth touchdown catch in the year for Isaac Fricky, and here's Fedorowicz on second down for Iowa, making an eight-yard grab. And can Minnesota's defense force another three and out? It's Wiseman on the ground, and he picks up the first down just shy of the 45-yard line, a gain of eight. And so Iowa moves the chains, they get the first down, and now James Manuel in the backfield decks Wiseman after a zero-yard gain. That's one way to slow down their halfback, and this time Rudock goes play action. Over the middle, it's dumped off to Wiseman, a gain of nine yards. Another third down for Iowa, they only need one yard. Rudock option right side with room, he breaks a tackle. 40 to 35 and brought down for a 13 yard run. And so now in field goal range, what a 50 yarder from this point is. Rudock throws on second and 10, rolls out right into pressure and he's sacked for a loss of seven. And they're gonna give the credit to Theron Cochran. Sack number six in the season for Theron Cochran, it's third down and 17. Rudock with nobody open downfield, and he's sacked again off the edge. This time it's going to be Owen Salzwedell, his first sack on the season. Minnesota able to get back-to-back -back sacks on defense, not even blitzing Jake Rudock, both off that right side. And so the Gophers do a great job of holding the Iowa offense once they get into Gopher territory. And here's Nelson rolling out on second down, and he just gets rid of it smartly. It'll be third down and seven. Could be a quick drive for the Gophers if they don't pick up these seven yards. And Iowa sends the blitz. Nelson gets a throw off just in time, and it's caught by Crawford Tufts for a one-yard gain. And so Iowa has some time to do some damage in the first half. One minute to go as it's Martin Manley making the catch on the sideline, his first catch on the entire day. Number one receiver, Cavante Martin Manley makes his first catch, and now Rudock back over the middle. It's Martin Manley again making the catch, this time in Gophers territory for a gain of 19. And Balthazar had him in coverage early, but now Martin Manley's getting himself open. First and 10 downfield, and Martin Manley for the third time on this drive. Now inside the 20, this time it's a 26-yard catch. And the Govers have a lot of trouble with Cavante Martin Manley on this drive. It's Rudock to Cotton who makes the catch underneath, and he's fighting for the extra yards and gets 13 yards to the two. And so first and goal, one receiver, and Rudock throws outside, touchdown. C.J. Fedorowicz puts the Iowa Hawkeyes back on top, 13 to zero, as Rudock finds him in the corner of the end zone wide open. Just about done of the first half, as we look at the offenses today, Minnesota has more plays, more yards, and more first downs, but trail the Iowa Hawkeyes by four, and Nelson on first down, the option goes nowhere, and the Gophers lose four. And the Gophers just take it in the halftime. It's 14 to 10. The Iowa Hawkeyes lead in the first Big Ten game of the season. And of course, both teams fighting for the Floyd of Rosedale. We're going to go into halftime now and talk some running backs today. As we're looking at a couple of recruits the Gophers are going after, Calvin Pope and Kevin Martindale. Pope appears to have a very good blend of power and elusiveness. Not the fastest running back out there, but a guy who could definitely carry the ball a handful of times a game. Not sure if he'd be a starter at the college level. And then there's Kevin Martindale, a very all-around solid running back. Good speed, good moves, and some strength to him as well. And at 5'9", 202, is a very small, shifty back that has a lot of potential for big plays. But after this season, the Gophers will graduate senior running back James Gillen, leaving them three on the roster. Janel Kirkwood, a junior. Roderick Williams, a sophomore. And Berkeley Edwards, who currently has the red shirt. So the Gophers have to replace Gillen this year and have a plan in place for when Kirkwood is eventually going to graduate next season. And so we'll keep you updated on all things recruiting for the Minnesota Gophers as the season progresses. But the second half is up next between Minnesota and Iowa. And the second half is underway. Iowa leads the Gophers 14 to 10, and they have the football here in the third quarter. And this is Mark Wiseman running off tackle, and he has no room. Brought down to the backfield by Damian Wilson, his second tackle for a loss. And the Gophers trying to force a quick three and out for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Third and nine. It's a screen pass to Wiseman. He's brought down immediately. That's James Manuel as they go to the screen again, and Minnesota stops it once again. Minnesota's first drive of the second half, it's second down and eight. Nelson was 10 of 14 passing in the first half, a touchdown and an interception as he runs the second and eight and slides ahead for a first down using his speed. Nelson can definitely do a lot of damage with his legs and this time it's an option. He keeps it himself as the first down again. Back-to-back -back first down runs for Philip Nelson. 
And now in Iowa territory. Kirkwood up the middle. Nice hole open up the offensive line. He has the first down, a gain of 13. The ground game working effectively. And Minnesota running as long as you will let them. Nelson to throw on first down. It's McDonald outside making the catch with 13 yards. And the Gophers are going right down the field. And the Gophers run their way inside the 10 yard line, third and then just it's Henry up the middle of the fullback and he has the first down, a six yard pickup. The Gophers are to reclaim the lead, second down and goal. It's Kirkwood up the middle, he dives, touchdown Minnesota. And they take back the lead, 16 to 14 on the two yard touchdown run by Danelle Kirkwood, number two on the year. The Gophers had the lead 17, 14 Iowa has the football, now it's Wiseman running the football, a nasty stiff arm at the 34 yard line, a gain of 9. And there you saw some of the strength of Mark Wiseman, that was a dirty stiff arm, and he takes the handoff back up the middle, and breaking tackles, busting through the Gophers defense for 20 tough running yards. In Gopher territory, it's 5 wide for Rudock, empty backfield as the Gophers drop back into his zone, and Cotton makes the catch underneath, and up to the 20 yard line, a gain of 27. And Iowa now looking to take back the lead. Offense is moving very well on this game, and Rudolph got the option. He'll keep it and run into the end zone. Nobody in his way. Untouched Jake Rudolph, and the Iowa Hawkeyes waste no time in answering back. And these two teams trade scores again. 21-17, Iowa once again leads. Nelson on second down, outside, and Crawford Tufts makes the catch, 14-yard gain. And Minnesota on first down and 10. Iowa sends the blitz, and Nelson in trouble. He's dropped for a loss. Seven-yard sack for Cooper. Following the sack, it's second down and 17, a split shotgun look, three wide. Fricky over the middle makes the catch and picks up the lost yardage. It'll be third down and six. The Gophers go three wide on third down and six. It's Crawford Tufts next to McDonald. And Nelson outside, his pass is well low intended for Crawford Tufts. That's a bad miss that forces fourth down. The Gophers unable to answer. The Iowa Hawkeyes are playing with the lead with the football. And Martin Manley outside makes the catch in the last play of the third quarter for 10 yards and a first down. And so one quarter left. Rudock hands off to Wiseman running up the middle. And he's fighting with Hageman for extra yards and picks up 14 yards. And you don't see very many players able to fight with Hageman like that. That's how you know Wiseman has strength. And this time he runs for seven, brought down by Bocelli. Third down and two, the Gophers bring a safety down in the box. Handoff, it's Wiseman up the middle, and met by James Manuel on the stop, a one yard gain, and the Gophers have forced fourth down. Excellent play quickly by James Manuel. But Iowa's going to go for it. Fourth down and one. Minnesota stacks the box and brings the blitz, and Rudock goes down. James Manuel on back to back plays in the backfield, stops the Iowa Hawkeyes, and this time sacks Jake Rudock, who never had a chance. And Minnesota forces the turnover on downs. They have the football. Six minutes to go in the game. Kirk up the middle for a gain of four yards. A big third down and short for Minnesota. They need two yards. And Nelson drops back to throw and finds his tight end open. 12 yards to Drew Goodger in Iowa territory. The chains move. Five minutes to play. Kirkwood takes the handoff running. And he has some room. A gain of eight. A very consistent running attack for Minnesota. Kirkwood out, Gillum in, he takes the handoff on second and short, off tackle, he has room to the 25, man at the 20 and hit hard but has 13 yards and the Gophers move the chains again. Down the field impressively with the ground game and now Nelson back to throw off the play action and he's hit, throws it out of the back of the end zone, he gets rid of it, it's second down and 10. A twin tight end look for Minnesota on second down, Nelson to throw, rolling to his right, he pumps and now fires to Frickty who breaks the tackle and makes the catch but his momentum carries him back to before the first down marker and so it's a nine yard gain and will look to be a possible touchdown pass. Third down and one, I formation. This time it's Roderick Williams up the middle. He has the first down with the balls out, but Minnesota retains possession. And this will go to a booth review. Not sure what this would really change besides the stat sheet for Roderick Williams. As you can see, it looks like he does touch the ground and is down before the ball comes out. So they do reverse the call, not much changes besides that fumble. And now Gillum back up the gut and fighting for the end zone. He'll get four, but two yards shy. 3.18 to go, second down and goal. Gillum in the backfield, Nelson to throw. And nobody open, he steps up, and the ball is ripped out! And Iowa has the football! With 3.11 to go, Philip Nelson loses the ball, it's ripped out, and Iowa takes it away inside the five yard line. Nelson saw nobody open downfield, so he looked to take off, and the ball was just ripped out. He was not down, it's Iowa ball. 
What a painful turnover. The Gophers appear to be ready to take the lead, but a Philip Nelson fumble gives it back to Iowa. Here's Fedorowicz making the catch, and the Gophers take about three guys to take him down. It's a three-yard gain. The Gophers need to get a quick stop on defense. 2.27 to go. Rudock, and he fires. Open is Cavante Martin Manley at the 24-yard line, making the catch first down. Iowa, 18 yards. No more room for error for the Gophers. They have to get stops. First down. Rudock, he's back to throw and pressured. He's sacked by Rasheed Hageman, exactly what the Gophers defense needed and the type of plays your star defensive player needs to deliver. Second down and 18, handoff. It's Wiseman up the middle with some room bouncing off one. He has seven yards, it's third down 11. The game is on the line. Minnesota needs a stop or it's all over. Rudock on third and 11, back to throw. Hit by Hageman, pass caught by Wiseman. He breaks the tackle and has a first down. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to knock off the Minnesota Gophers. Hageman almost had the sack and Manuel almost had the tackle, but Mark Wiseman powers through. And that'll do it. The Minnesota Gophers fall in their first Big Ten game of the season in heartbreaking fashion to the Iowa Hawkeyes, 21-17. The Gophers had a shot to take the lead in the fourth quarter, but were unable to do so after a Philip Nelson fumble. And once again, it's turnovers that get the worst of the Gophers and send them to their second loss straight. They're now 3-2 on the year. And the defense was not overly impressive today, especially against the pass. Jake Rudock was 19 of 22 throwing. And Iowa celebrates with Floyd of Rosedale for the second year in a row as they get their first Big Ten win over the Minnesota Gophers 21-17. And following this loss, the Gophers will travel to Ann Arbor next week to take on the Michigan Wolverines, their toughest opponent of the season so far, number 22 in the nation, as they play for the Little Brown Jug that Minnesota has not had for five years. They've lost five straight to Michigan. They'll try to end that losing streak next week, as well as their current two-game losing streak. And so we'll see you next week from Ann Arbor when the Gophers take on the Wolverines. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.